on today's episode. This video is primarily a review of this Eashin ATX03S and in particular the smart audio feature that it has to be able to set the channel and various other parameters remotely from your transmitter. Obviously in order to do that we're going to need a, a camera so I've selected this camera. The camera is the Mr. MS745 5 to 24 volts and this is the 2.5 millimeter lens version. That is all the information that we have in the box was just a, a bag of screws and the mounting bracket. No other information whatsoever. So another journey of discovery. Let's take a look at the other components that we need and how we're going to wire it up. We're going to need a receiver that has both SBUS and telemetry. So I'm using this X8R from uh, FR Sky. The S bus connector on this flight controller, which is the Omnibus F3, is here. So clearly we have a negative rail to here, a positive rail to the middle, and our S bus signal goes here. For the telemetry to work, we need to connect the smart port and I've chosen to connect it to the transmit pin of UART2. In the normal course of events, it's the flight controller which is sending data, the telemetry data, to your transmitter so that you can see it. But how, I hear you ask, is information going to come from the transmitter through the receiver if it only is connected to the transmit pin. The answer is that this is a single wire half duplex connection and half duplex it receives and transmits on the same wire, obviously at different times. So that's how that magic happens there. Turning our attention to the camera connections and they're listed down here. The 5 volt for the camera is in fact this blue wire and there is a camera ground. So we connect our camera ground and our plus 5. However, there's a trick now. The video needs to pass through the flight controller so that the flight controller can impose the OSD information on the camera signal. Therefore, the yellow video out from the camera goes to video in on the flight controller. The video out from the flight controller now passes to the video in of the transmitter. I've elected to use the first UART, the TX1, as the output to control the VTX signal. So here from transmit 1 is my connection to the smart audio cable. Also on this connector we have available ground and plus 5 volts and the plus 5 connections there. One last observation. On the back of the little camera um, there is an OSD, not to be confused with the OSD from the flight controller, to set up uh, the camera parameters, you know, NTSC, PAL, white balance, contrast and all the other goodness. The little multi-way switch board that you need to configure that is not included with the camera but I happen to have one from uh, a, a Cadex Turtle camera. Be aware that if you use this board you need to swap the two connections over. Uh, the Cadex connections are opposite to this particular camera so just be aware of that because this is not a passive device. Simple, eh? All we have to do now is to wire it up. One major annoyance when trying to connect these devices is that they all have similar uh, connecting plugs, but none of them seem to actually work together. As an example, here are two of the connectors, and clearly the pitch and the size of the pins is completely different. So the only option is to solder the wires. So I've taken the, the plug off of here, and we're going to solder the wires together. That seems to be the way of the world these days. With the later flight controllers, they almost always now just have solder pads that you connect to 
rather than these connectors which there seems to be no standard or compatibility. The power wiring to the camera has been done and the connection for the smart audio to the transmit one. All that remains now is the video in and out. So remembering that the camera video needs to go to the video in, which is the innermost pin, which is the white one here. And finally, the video out from the flight controller to the transmitter. On the top of the frame here, I've just 3D printed a small bracket, which the video transmitter will be tie wrapped to. So I'll get that all put into place now. Let's take a look now at the configuration that we need to put into our flight controller software. Firstly, looking at the ports, remember that we connected UART1 to the smart audio. So over here in peripherals, we just select that as smart audio. UART2 transmit is our smart port connection to the receiver. Again, a little confusing, it just says telemetry output but it is in fact uh, an input as well. Here is the serial receiver setup. So that is all we need to do with our ports. In the configuration tab, we scroll down, we see our receiver serial setup there as SBUS. Moving on down in the other features area, we enable the telemetry and obviously the OSD. And that is the configuration complete. Nothing too complicated uh, to set up uh, Betaflight or indeed any other configurator version. We can see the board in place now. So testing times. Let's give it some power. And we're getting video and the OSD appears to be working. We have the little LEDs here which indicate the power levels in the, in the bands, but we won't need to look at the LEDs because we have our marvelous OSD system. There are two ways that we can access that. Um, the traditional way is with the throttle stick halfway up and yawed, and then we get the menu there. It's not terribly clear, so let's pop the lens cap on. Now we can see our menu much more clearly. We simply use the sticks to navigate the menu and what I'm more, most interested in for this particular video is the VTX and this one is Smart Audio, the other one is Tramp, so select Smart Audio and we can see our channel and frequency, the power setting in the menu here is where we select to set the options and the config and selecting the pit mode. The, I don't see any way not even holding the power button down and, and, and powering up which is normally the way to go into pit mode. It doesn't seem to react to that. I've managed to get it into pit mode a couple of times using this menu but it seems to be a bit flaky for me. Let's go back. So, for example, if we change the power up to, say, 500, watch the LEDs there when we set it. We can see that the LEDs reflect the status of the new power setting. Moving the stick the opposite way takes the 
value down. Let's turn that power down again. As I said, there's another option for changing these values. On the transmitter, I've installed a Lua script. I have no idea why it's called Lua. As far as I remember, Lua is Portuguese for moon. But there we go. There'll be links in the description, as always, to these things. But you can set it via this Lua script as well. So here again, the band, channel, power, pit mode, and the frequency. So, for example, once again, enter into the power options. We can go up and then enter. Once that's fixed, the menu and then a quick enter to save. Uh, once again, we can see the status of the LED reflects that change. So, all in all, a successful test of this uh, VTX transmitter with the smart audio feature. I was sent this by Banggood for uh, evaluation, but I actually purchased the camera. I think this is on offer now for around, uh, around $10, and at that sort of price, I, I don't think you can go too far wrong.